Hi everybody, this is Catherine, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Resident Evil Village. So first, first of all, um, this game you don't necessarily need the 144 FPS if you have like a 144 Hertz screen. I feel like you want to be immer like you want to be the game uh, immersive. Uh, so you want like very good graphic, you want to use all those um, shadows and stuff like that. So we don't want to remove everything to, to, you know, to have like more FPS. So I will show you like how to optimize the game to have like a decent 60 FPS with good graphic quality. Uh, and also the game is well optimized. The, this engine is really good. Like Capcom used it for the like past three or four games like Devil May Cry, uh, the Re Resident Evil Remaster and stuff like that. So it's running very smoothly on PC. So the first thing that you really need to do, it's the game mode, right? Game mode. Oops, sorry. Game mode. Make sure that your game mode is at on. Uh, really important. You will have a nice 3% boost in your FPS. I did a compare region game mode on versus off. On for me was better. Uh, it takes my best core on my Ryzen CPU to run the game. And when I don't use it, I don't know why some of my best core are like just running tasks from windows so really important to use that to make sure that you optimize your uh, resources after that the xbox game bar i recommend to put this one at off and i, I recommend to put all your uh, the overlays at off if you're using the discord one amd uh, nvidia don't use that you will lose like fps and also sometimes it's causing stuttering so you don't want to use those options after that, for the capture part, make sure that your background recording is at off and recorded audio is at off. So this is pretty much it. Another thing that you need to do is write GPU in your search bar. You will have a nice option called Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling. To have that, you need uh, an NVIDIA video card um, series 1000 or above to make sure that you will have this option. And also you, have, you need the latest version from Windows. So make sure that you update your windows to have this option. When you will put this option at on, you will need to restart your computer to make sure it's applied because if you don't do that, it will not be applied. So you will not see any difference. For me, it gives me 3% boost on Resident Evil. After that, another thing that's really important, make sure that you update your driver. So NVIDIA, AMD or Intel, even if you're using like an integrated video card on your CPU, it's a AAA game. They always like uh, release a dedicated um, driver for uh, th those games. So normally you can see a difference between 5 to 8% boost in your FPS when you have the latest driver. One more thing, it's the um, all those energy plan, the one from Windows or the one on your video card. Make sure that you're using a good one like power management mode. Make sure that you're using prefer maximum performance. Balance can also be good. Honestly, normally you will not have this issue on desktop computer. It's more for a laptop. For an example, my Dell XPS, uh, my laptop. When I plug the laptop in the wall, it's still on uh, the eco mode. So you don't want to use eco mode when you plug your uh, laptop on the wall, you know. Uh, so it's re it, it was using like 60% on my CPU and 60% of my um, GPU uh, to make sure that the, the, it respect the eco mode. So make sure that when you plug your laptop in the wall, you're using the maximum performance or the balance one if you don't want to go too, too crazy with your laptop. So now let's go inside of the game. We will look at the, the graphic parameter. We have a lot of options. So now inside of the game. So let's go over here. Sorry, guys. Don't use the mouse on their setting. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty bad. So I'm going to use the arrow. So let's start with the display mode. So display mode, I really recommend to use full screen. Don't use borderless or Windows window mode. Sorry. Uh, you will lose a couple of FPS and sometimes even I will uh, I was having like stuttering in the borderless mode So I'm playing full screen for the screen resolution for sure use your native one So depending on your monitor if you're playing 1080p 2k 4k, etc Refresh rate make sure that you're matching your refresh rate with your monitor. So really depend on What monitor that you have for me? It's 144 frame rate. I'm using variable uh, I just want to lower a little bit my input lag so, for an example, I can show you if you put 60, you will now have like 16 MS input lag over here. If I go to variable, my input lag go lower. So this is pretty much why I'm doing it. Uh, Vsync, if you have like a big uh, issue with um, 
tiering in your monitor, you can definitely put this one at off. Uh, it will help you a lot. And as you can see, FPS change over here. Uh, another thing that I want to mention is um, it really depends on your... Um, if you have like a G-Sync monitor, uh, free sync monitor, really depend here what you want to do and what is your goal. For rendering mode, I recommend normal, really important, uh, this one. I did a comparison between interlace and normal. The image quality is a lot better in normal. You save a little bit of VRAM if you go interlace, but I really prefer the normal one. So this is pretty much it. After that, the image quality. The image quality, go with one. If you go in upscaling, you will lose a lot of performance. And if you downscale, you will see that your image quality decreases a lot. So you're going to have like some blurriness, uh, um, also some pixels. So don't go with that. One is the way to go. Fidelity AFX CAS, I'm using it. Put this one at on, it will help you also. Anti-aliasing, this one is the first one that... Uh, it really depends on your computer. For me, TAA, I don't have any issue with it, but on my laptop, I prefer to use FXAA for performance. So really depend, do a test between both. Uh, but FXAA uh, seems a good way to go. Variable rate shading, put this one at off. After that, texture quality. So really important here, look at your VRAM on your card. It's pretty crazy in this game. I can like max out my video card. Normally with eight gig of VRAM, you don't have this issue. So. The texture filter quality and the texture quality just like follow it so for example if you go at 16 go with 8x if you go at 4 gig over here go with 4x etc etc really depend on your vram don't go in red over here you don't want to be at like 7.6 uh utilization on your vram because you know your computer needs other resources i'm not sure what you're doing on your computer sometimes people are watching youtube video in the second screen so you want like uh some vram available for your computer so don't go too crazy with it mesh quality is the first graphic parameter that will help you a lot with your fps so mesh quality max to high you can get three percent three to four percent in your fps high to medium three to four percent again and low it's a two percent so mid for me is a good like balance between image quality and fps Sorry, ray tracing. Ray tracing really depends on your video card. If you have like a second gen view video card, you can definitely go with. Sorry, it fails again. You can definitely go with ray tracing at on on a 2070 and a 2060. I feel like low is a little bit better for reflection and light reflection. You can stay at mid. If you have some like a 3000 series, you can definitely go mid or even high over there. It will give you a nice image quality. So ray tracing is really nice in this game and it's running well. You're yes, you're losing um, a lot of performance because you don't have the LSS to compensate it. But still, it's running pretty smoothly if you're aiming for a 60 FPS experience. So I'm going to put this one at off just to continue because uh, the majority of the people doesn't have like ray tracing. Uh, ambient inclusion, I did a couple of tests. Uh, this will give you a lot of FPS if you compare fidelity to off. Yes, it will give you like a nice 6% boost. But I feel like you should use definitely use ambient inclusion in this game because you want to be the game immersive. So between fidelity and uh, SSAO, I didn't see a big difference, honestly. And you kind of like saving a little bit of VRAM. So go with fidelity FX. Screen space reflection. This one, again, it gives you a lot of FPS, 5% on versus off. But as you can see in the image, uh, your image will look like shit without it. So really depend where you're at right now in your build and your FPS. Uh, go with uh, on if you can do it. Volumetric lighting quality. This one also is really important. High to mid, you will uh, gain a 5% boost in your FPS. Mid to low, you will gain 3 FPS, 3%, sorry. So definitely go with mid for this one. Uh, subsurf subsurface are scattering. You can definitely put this one at off. I see like 1% difference in my image quality. Uh, sorry, in my FPS. So uh, that's why I stay at on with this one. Shadow quality is pretty pretty much the most important uh, graphic parameter in this game. Max to high, you can gain 3 to 4%. Uh, high to mid, another 3%. And mid to low, a 2% uh, difference. So definitely, again, go with mid with this one. Contact shadow, you can stay at on. You will lose about like 2%, but still, it's a really nice effect, as you can see. Shadow Cache, I recommend to use this one. It will help you with your processing load. So when you put this one at off, you can see over here. 
So we'll definitely use the cash one. Bloom, Bloom and Lens Fair normally, those parameter, I remove it. Uh, when I play like competitive game, but in this game you want to uh, to use it because again you want to to add like a nice image quality. Bloom at on you will lose three percent boost in your f by three percent uh, in your FPS and lens flare you will lose two percent in your FPS. Film North I recommend to put this one at off. I really don't like the the image quality when I put this one at on. The depth of fill also I remove it. I feel like it's more a console thing. You don't want depth of fill when you're playing this game, so everything needs to be clear. And the last one is the lens distortion. This one, um, it's a bit weird. The the on or the on plus chromatic aberration. I didn't see a difference between both, but at off, honestly, I, I got like more stable FPS. So if you're getting like crazy drop because of lens distortion, go with off definitely. If if you don't see the difference, just go with on with chromatic aberration at on. So that's about it, guys, for the guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. Look also at your thermal in this game. My graphic, uh, <laughs> my, my GPU, when I play the game, I'm going at 72, 73 degrees. That's a lot for uh, 2070 like mine because normally I'm averaging at like 65, 66 degrees and I have a, a really good like tower so uh, and a good airflow. So really look at this because maybe you can have like some uh, throttling, throttling sorry, on your GPU. So really look at your thermal because it will affect your performance. So that's about it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.